champions, welcome back. Clocks on the Stove podcast, episode 66, with your usual host, myself, Grayson Fisher, and with me, the one and only Mr. Zach Watts. Today, we're going to be diving in a little on the NFL round one playoffs. Starting us off in order of games, we will go with the Saturday slate at 430. The Seattle Seahawks going down to the San Francisco 49ers, our 815 game. The L.A. Chargers going across the country to the great state of Florida to play the Jacksonville Jaguars. That game will be at 815. On Sunday, we have a great three-headed dragon between the Miami Dolphins going all the way to Buffalo, New York to play the Buffalo Bills at 1 o'clock. The New York Giants going to Minnesota. Pretty cold in New York, pretty cold in Minnesota already. That game's at 430. Special shout-out to our very own champion, Mr. Dane Bell in safety for the Giants. Hope nothing but good things for him in that game. And then our night game at 815 on Sunday, we have the Baltimore Ravens traveling to the Bengals of Cincinnati at 815. And then our Monday night game, possibly the worst game they could have made for the Monday night game at 815. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers will be hosting the Dallas Cowboys. Zach, how are we feeling about this one, round one? Because I'm going to keep it 100 with you. This is not a very uh, overwhelming round one of playoffs, in my opinion. No, but I think it's a good balance. You know, all these teams are actually – are yeah, all these teams have played one another at some point. You know, so these are all rematch games. Uh, one thing I like to see is there's a lot of division rivalry matchups. You know, we have the Seahawks and 49ers. That's an NFC West matchup. You have the Dolphins and Bills. Uh, that's going to be an AFC East matchup. And I'm pretty sure – oh, and then we have one more AFC North, Ravens, Bengals. Um, as you know, Bucks Cowboys played each other earlier in the year. Giants Vikings played each other earlier in the year, and the Chargers and Jaguars all also played each other earlier in the year. Um, all ended up being great games. I think outside of the Chargers Jaguars game, in which they blew them out, but we'll we'll get into that later. Um, but I am looking forward to it because, as we know, the playoffs is a different beast, and anything can happen. So let's just get right on into it. Yeah. So starting us off with our first game, Zach. Like I said, we have the Seattle Seahawks coming in at nine and eight, traveling to the San Francisco 49ers coming in at 13 and 4 San Francisco this game's at 4:30 p.m. on Fox San Francisco coming in at a minus 9 favorite Zach dive in and get us started on this on this roll of this game yeah you know like i said earlier this is an NFC West matchup these teams have already played each other twice um in that matchup the 49ers have won both of those games um not only that they've held the Seahawks to under 14 points in both of those games so i think that's pretty big um, Niners are also riding a 10 game win streak. You know, they're very hot as of late. They've been playing some exceptionally well football led by Brock Purdy. You know, he kind of stepped up as Mr. Irrelevant this year. Um, and it's kind of turned that whole name around. Um, he is Mr. Relevant this year. They have high hopes for him. They're expecting him to do some big things. And, you know, that's kind of hard to do considering you're a rookie quarterback, but at the same time, you know, this, there's a reason this is the playoffs. Anything can happen. You know, the Seahawks, as they say, third time is a charm. Maybe they can turn around and beat the 49ers. Um, you know, maybe Brock Purdy doesn't shine the brightest under those playoff lights. You never know. Um, one thing I will say, though, a team is never more dangerous than when they have no expectations. And I think that's the fan base of Seattle. That's the team of Seattle. You know, they came into this thinking it was a rebuild year. They had let go of their star quarterback, Russell Wilson. They gave Geno Smith the reins. I mean, at the beginning, it was a QB battle between – Geno Smith and Drew Locke and you know after that they're like oh well Geno won it out then like oh we're really screwed and then look at Geno Smith man ninth overall rated quarterback this year has exceeded all expectations has led them to a playoff berth and I think it's just play play your kind of football man just go into it no expectations the fans are just happy you made the playoffs anyway they're not going to be too upset if you lose so just fucking play to your heart's content man like go out there leave it all on the line that's what it means uh, to play in this league, and I couldn't be happier for him. However, if I'm a betting man, I can't go with my heart. I got to stick with all brains. Got to go with the logic. I think the 49ers are going to win this one. Probably, uh, they're probably going to cover, if we're being honest, but that's how I feel about it. I think <clears throat> the Seattle Seahawks are an awesome story, getting that winning record after. I mean, when they first got rid of Russ, the whole talk was like, oh, like people were shitting on them, saying it was a terrible trade. You know, they were like, why would you get rid of him? But, you know, Russ was kind of parting ways. It was like a mutual agreement. I wouldn't say, like, he was upset and wanted to leave, and I wouldn't say they wanted to get rid of him. I think it was like, we're ready for something new, and you're ready for something new in your in your journey of life and in football. But, Zach, I like Geno Smith a lot. He's a gamer. I don't know if you remember watching him when he used to play with Tavon Austin at West Virginia. 
they were nasty. Mm-hmm. Um, on top of that, uh, Kenneth Walker starting to find his own, starting to find his footing, starting to play like an NFL running back. More, not really talked about his potential anymore, but rather like this guy's balling. But I think San Francisco's on a tear right now. They're five and zero in their last five. <clears throat> Seattle's two and three in their last five. I mean, Seattle should have lost that Rams game. Baker fucked the Lions, which makes me so sad. But I'm gonna take San Francisco. I'm not really gonna touch the spread or anything. I don't really care to throw any confidence like money wise towards this game. I just do think San Francisco is the better team. I would say though, one thing that does favor Seattle is that they're not going across the country or changing the climate. They're literally going what like four hours away, maybe. Yeah. So it's not it's not gonna kill them there. But yeah, I don't think the Seahawks are gonna do anything too too crazy that's gonna it's gonna really shake up and scare off uh, the 49ers, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Our next game moving forward, the Los Angeles Chargers. I almost said Clippers. That's that was weird. Going to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Chargers coming in at ten and seven. Jags nine and eight. And the our odds are looking a minus one and a half for the Chargers with a forty seven and a half over under. Zach Wass. Yep. So these guys played each other. I think week three of the season. Um. And this is kind of a huge upset. You know, people had high hopes with the Chargers being a playoff team. They thought they were going to make a run for even the AFC West crown, um, rivaling that of the Kansas City Chiefs. And this is kind of Doug Peterson and Trevor Lawrence's kind of wake-up game. You know, they smacked them right in the face, beating them 38-10. to 10. Um, They caused a huge amount of turnovers for them. Uh, Justin uh, – not Justin Herbert. Austin Eckler, excuse me, got shut down in this game. Only four carries for five yards in their matchup. Uh, Herbert was only – 25 of 45, 297 yards at Teddy and a pick. But I think what really helped the Jags in that game is James Robinson ran for over 100 yards. And if you haven't been keeping up with football lately, James Robinson is not a part of the Jacksonville Jaguars anymore. He got shipped off to the New York Jets. But Travis Etienne has stepped up immensely uh, in that role, so I think he'll be a nice number one back in this game. I do think, though, that the second time around, uh, Staley and his crew will play a lot more competitive game this time around. They're going to utilize Eckler a little bit more um, in the running aspect. They use him well in the receiving aspect. I'm pretty sure he had like eight receptions for, yeah, what was it? Eight receptions for 48 yards. So um, that'll be good. But yeah, the Jaguars, man, they've kind of really stepped up this season. Doug Peterson has completely changed um, the expectations for the Jags coming into those. You know, they thought they were still kind of in their rebuild years. And I still think they kind of are. They don't have all the pieces yet, but they are a very competitive team with how well Trevor Lawrence has been playing. I think he's been a top 10 quarterback in this league as of late. Um, and as for Herbert, you know, we know how good his talent is. It's good to see him get some playoff experience. He needs it under his belt uh, at this point in his career. So I'm just excited for this marquee matchup of perennial quarterbacks, up and coming guys that are really going to take the reins of this league in years to come. Yeah. I think it's also just awesome to see, like you said, two perennial guys, you know, two, you know, if potentially wise future Hall of Famers. But I saw a tweet that was like, dude, screw the game. This is a competition of which quarterback has the best hair in the NFL. And I do think that is a great comparison to give these guys. Jack, these are, in my opinion, two completely opposite type of teams, Zach. Let's talk about the Chargers first, the away team, right? Chargers have all the talent and potential to be one of the best teams in the NFL. They are literally match up with any team. They have a great offense, great defense, great quarterback, great running back, great receivers. Their O line's not horrible. Like, they have everything, and for some reason they can't put it together, and they're playing way below their standards. And then you look at the Jags, and it's like the exact opposite. Like, they don't really have the pieces together. They're kind of still finding their footing, kind of finding their culture and figuring out who they are, but yet they're 9-8, and eight and they're the home team in this game, you know? So yeah. it is it is it is a little interesting to see, like, these two teams are coming from, like, completely different ends. Um, I do think the Chargers are a much better team, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it a haunted with you. I'm going to take the Jags in this game. Dougie P, bro. I know we talk about Dan Campbell all the time and let his nuts hang. Dougie P lets him hang, bro. Mm. Big Doug Peterson fan. I think Dougie P is the guy. Um, and I think they're starting to get confident and they're starting to feel themselves. You know, I mean, the Jags, I mean, both these teams are on a tear their last five games. Uh, the Chargers did lose to Denver in their last game, though, which is crazy, but they're 4-1. and one. And the Jags are 4-0 oh, or 5-0 and oh in their last five. So these both teams are starting to feel themselves and get that rhythm going. I just think, dude, you ever been you ever been in Jacksonville? You've seen those motherfuckers? They're crazy. That stadium's gonna be rocking. They haven't been to playoffs since what, Blake Bortles? Like it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna be nuts, dude. It's gonna be nuts. I think it's gonna be fun. I think it's gonna be a good game. Um, I honestly might hit ah, 
I'm going to take the over of 47. Uh, I don't know. If it was 42, I'm not going to take it. Give me Jags. I will take a pick on this one, though, and give me Jags plus one and a half. Fair enough. Yeah, I'll take the Jags in this one as well. Um, I think they're just a hotter team right now. Um, as much as I want Herbert to have playoff success, success excuse me, um, I just don't think his the team around him is really helping him out a bunch. Um, I don't know if it's coaching or defense. They just haven't really been themselves this year. I think Bosa's been out. Joey has been out for the most part. I don't know if he's back either. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to ride with the Jaguars in that pick. And I, I agree. I'm a, I'm a big Herbert fan, dude. I, I, I did not like him coming out of college. I was like, oh, he's just another Oregon mm-hmm. system quarterback. But then you get to learn about who this kid is, okay? He's from Eugene, Oregon. He was a blue chip recruit, five-star Elite 11. Like, he had – he's a, he, was a, he was a fucking road to glory kid, you know? Um. And then you find out this kid went to Eugene, Oregon. He went to the University of Oregon, from Eugene, Oregon, because that's his dream, and he wanted to be a hometown hero. Goes there, has the most success they've had in a long time. And on top of that, he has a 4.10 GPA in, like, chemical engineering or something crazy like that, like some insane class. So this kid, like, he probably is, like, a little nerdy socially, but as a football guy, he's as football guy as it comes, dude. School I mean- and football, that's all he cares about. I mean, dude, he aced the wonder lick. Like, literally, like, the QB test they give out to all QBs, he aced it. And they were like, yeah, this kid might be, like, either A, autistic, or B, a robot. Like, those yeah. are the only two ways we can diagnose this kid because we have no idea what the fuck is going on in that head of his. And he only speaks in movie quotes. I don't know if you've ever heard his NFL film breakdown. It's just like, yeah! Like, all right, dude. Like, maybe that's how they, like, socially, like, that's how they socially wired him is they just sat him in a room. They're like, all right, we know you only play football, but we're going to have you watch like all these comedy Adam Sandler ass movies. And you're just going to take out your favorite lines from him and randomly say them during games. Yeah. Like, no, I, I like just... him though, dude, I'm a big fan. I got on my fantasy team last year and I think that's what started really me liking him. And I think like without him, this team is seven and 10 at minimum. They're not 10 and seven. I think he's a huge factor in them. He gets a lot of hate. Also, let's talk about who was that reporter that said they called him a social media quarterback. Oh, uh, Emmanuel Ocho. Yeah, yeah. He, calls him Emmanuel. A, he calls him a social media quarterback. And then the Chargers clap back. They clap yeah. back by posting all these interviews and TikToks and stuff that they failed to do because he ran away from the camera and he hates being on camera. And he like doesn't yeah. he like doesn't even run his own social media accounts. And then yeah. and then he apologized and was like, I'm d i am I will not speak any slander of Justin Herbert the rest of the season. Yeah. He, Emmanuel Ocho also thinks that uh Tua is better than Justin Herbert. Yeah. Just gonna throw that out there. Not a fucking chance. Sorry, uh, Dolphins fans. Gunther, I know you're out there fucking <laughs> sucking two off, but yeah, sorry, but bud. Yeah, not, no, Herber, not that one. Herbert's that guy. And then also another thing I want to add about Herbert, since we're on this Herbert rant, I was reading when, when Crystal Ball went to Miami and then they had this shitty season this year, I was reading on Twitter from some reporter that a lot of people at Oregon like were upset and said that uh, the only reason um, – What's his name? Herbert didn't shine the way he should have shined. Have been a Heisman candidate at Oregon because Crystal Ball ruined him, and he didn't run a great offense for him. And like he, like the only reason they were so good was because of Herbert, not because of Crystal Ball. And like I read a bunch of stuff on that. Yeah, who would have thought that uh, the guy that got beat by Middle Tennessee while at Miami wouldn't have made Justin Herbert a perennial quarterback? Who would have fucking thought, man? Jesus Christ! But I liked Crystal I Ball when he was at Oregon, though, which is weird. But I mean, it does show you. It does show you one how easy the Pac-12 is, and two what recruiting does for you. Yeah, I and agree. Justin Herbert, I guess. But yeah, moving on to our next game. Also, I'm a big, real quick. I'm also a big Trevor Lawrence fan. I think Trevor Lawrence, in my opinion, is I'm not gonna say best, but I'm gonna say the most pro-ready quarterback ever from college, in my opinion. I think, he, like, just talent-wise, uh, I'm not gonna say his stats really back that, even though they could easily. Um, I think he's one of the best talents I've seen out of college easily. Mm-hmm. Like just watching with my eyes, watching a college football game, he had the most control over a fucking, like he made Dabo. Like he fucking yeah, made Dabo. Yeah. Bro, yeah. his composure is beautiful. He never freaks out. He never even has like a sad or scared look on his face. He's just so calm. He makes every situation happen. Like, dude, he was just so much fun to watch. And like, I think another reason he doesn't get the credit, um, that he should is because he played on Clemson and they were so dominant versus like Cam Newton brought a six and uh, five and seven Auburn team into the natty and won it, you know? So like it was a little bit harder for him to get that natty knowledge, but I think he was the best in the country. I think his last is 
his two his second and third season in the NFL, in college football, he was the best player in in college football. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And he has great hair. Anyways, back to this. Sunday game, open us up at 1 p.m. on CBS. We have the Miami Dolphins coming in at 9 and 8, traveling to the cold city of Buffalo in New York, basically Canada, um, at 13 and 3. Buffalo coming in at a minus 13 and a half favorite. Zach Watts. Oh, mind you, also, Tua is not playing this game. Skylar Thompson is playing this game. If you don't know who Skylar Thompson is, he's the former Kansas State quarterback. Zach Watts. Yep. Uh, uh... I think I'm going to take the smart decision here and just say the Bills are going to win this one, and Miami doesn't stand a fucking chance, um, given since two has been out. They haven't scored a touchdown in, what, their last three or four games. Um, so struggling would be an understatement. Um, even if Teddy Bridge, Teddy B was able to play in this one, I don't think that makes much That's difference. That's what I was going to ask you. I said hypothetically, what if they had a healthy Teddy B, though? Yeah, no, nah, sorry, not happening. Um, this Buffalo team is just a different breed, um, and I think they view themselves – as championship contenders. I mean, we've all seen the Stefan Diggs photo where he's just standing and watching the Chiefs fucking dunk on his head. Um, you got to you gotta view yourself in the mirror and you got to say to yourself, am I a champion or am I just a fucking pushover? And this will probably answer that pretty quickly because if you lose this game, well, you're out and you suck. Yeah. And if you win, if you win, you're taking a step in the right direction. So, you know, I think this is – to them, I hope they're not overlooking it because like I always say – Playoff games are a different breed, but at the same time, like I feel like they're kind of doing this as just a stepping stone game for the next step in the process. But I mean, we'll see. I I hope the Dolphins are somewhat competitive, but at the same time, if the Bills even make it look like a contest, and I I have bad hopes for their Super Bowl contenders because they need what, to blow them out. Do you think it's Mike McDaniel's fault with the the recent lack of success with um? Miami because like it's hard it's they're in a really weird scenario right now because they're in the playoffs okay but they have the same record as last year right or the year before right yeah and and they started off hot and then they shit the bed and they were hot and they shit the bed and then you have all these crazy shit going on with two on the the concussion protocols and like the NFL just absolutely not giving a fuck about their players if we're going to be completely honest um and it's weird because I'm pretty sure they started off like what, like six, like seven and two or something, and they're like on a two and seven streak, some some weird stat like that recently. Do you think it's Mike McDaniel's fault? Because there are rumors floating around that the Dolphins are trying to get rid of him to get Sean Payton, and I personally don't think he's that bad of a coach. I just want to see, you know, you have a little more knowledge uh, when it comes to the NFL than myself. That's why I want to see what what you think about this. No, I think they like what Mike McDaniels has done there so far. You know, they brought him in as the guy, um, and I think it'd be pretty shitty to just kick him out of the door after one season. You know, they saw how good they were with Tua to open up the year. I just think it's been a bit of an unfortunate situation with all the injuries that have procured Tua. Um, you know, you look at wrestling, they say one of the hardest parts of wrestling um, is learning how to fall properly. Like, you have to learn how to take it. Tua just doesn't know how to fucking take a tackle properly. This man gets slammed on his head more than anyone. Like, I've seen plenty of guys get tackled the same way he does. He's the only dude that I've seen get fucking just – he braces for impact with his fucking yeah, head. Like, what are you space, doing, dude? Yeah. yeah, he's just like, yeah, I'm going to break this fall with the back of my dome. Like, I totally won't be concussed after this. Like, dude, I've never like, seen dude, Tua, like, like go for a run and, like, brace for a hit. He's just like – he's like he's, it's, he's like a little kid. <laughs> he's like a little kid in the playground that doesn't know how to control their limbs yet. And they're just like <laughs> – running. Yeah, like, you're the – Going everywhere. Yeah, all the fans are just the teachers watching the little fifth grader run straight to the monkey bars, and you just know that monkey bar is right head high, and you're just like, yeah, yeah he's gonna, he's gonna get knocked the fuck yeah, out. Yeah, that's a great point though that you said that because I noticed it, but I never, I guess, like, like clicked it. But you're, you're right. He doesn't brace at all, and like yeah. the last concussion he got was horrible to the back of the head. But he could have like, you know, like tightened up or something. He just went dunk. You yeah, know, he literally, I think he needs to take a falling course, like where they just have random people come up and just shove the shit out of him. Just take like, like, like off season of judo, just get thrown a time, <laughs> time, time, time. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, yeah, obviously it's needed because, like, you, you can't really plan for that. Mike McDaniels isn't like making his game plans for the week and he's like, all right, and in the second quarter, two is going to get his 85th concussion. Yeah. So, Teddy, yeah. for this drive, you're going to do this shit, and when you evidently break your thumb or whatever fucking bullshit injury, you're going to have Skyler. You're going to come in for the fourth quarter. So we're just going to we're just gonna give you all equal reps, and I'm never going to have a real number one QB. Like, you're you're all QB ones in my book, man. Like, this is, this is the most participation-ass team I've ever seen. Like, that's kind of how it looks like it's being run right now. But, no, I feel for the guy. 
Uh, Mike McDaniels is a great coach. I've seen videos of him all year. The dude's just loose. He's a great guy for the locker room. You know, the guys seem to love him as well. You know, I think Tyreek calls him Big Dick Daniels or something like that. He was like Big Nuts Daniels. Whatever he calls him, it's funny as shit. Um, but obviously, they have a great relationship down there. I think it's just going to take some time. You know, just because you just because you bring Tyreek in isn't suddenly going to make you like a Super Bowl contending team. You still need some pieces uh, here and there. But, you know, they're, they're still a work in progress. Um, but I'm glad to see they did make the playoffs because um, sure as fuck the Patriots didn't deserve to be there. And thank God we're looking for an OC now. But, yeah, enough of my Patriots rant. Um, but, yeah, Bill's winning this one. Yeah, I, uh, real quick, just like, I want to stay on this Dolphins topic real quick. Um, first of all, can we both agree that the way that – first, the concussion stuff is not on, on Mike Daniels. That is entirely on the, on the staff, on, the, on yeah. the concussion protocol staff. And they are – they, I think they should be sued after the season. Like, it's insane the stuff that happens and they keep trying to let them get away with it, you know? Um, it's so – it's scary, man, especially being a combat fighter. Think about that. Like, the, I always say – everyone's like, when are you going to stop fighting? I was like, I'm going to stop fighting if, you know, age hits me and I have to quit because of age or this goes. Like, this is more important than anything. Like, this is your life, you know? And, yeah. and it's just – it's scary. On the other note, I came into this season hating Mike Daniels. I thought he was a loser. I thought he was going to do anything there, and I was also pretty upset they got rid of um, what was his name, um, Brian Flores. Yeah, Brian Flores. I was glad to let him go. No, nah, I like Brian Flores. Anyway. No, nah, I think he, I think he was fucking terrible for two. They literally drafted Tua, and he was like, "Nah, you fucking suck, bro." Oh, but yeah, Mike McDaniel's turns you into a fucking All Pro quarterback just because. He made him sit down and watch what three hundred hours. That's of his what, own yeah, that's like, right. So say you're great. fucking great. Say you're fucking great. Yeah, I was. Gonna, was like, I'm great. I'm great. Yeah, start. I was gonna say first. I got Tyreek and fantasy, and the way they utilized him made me love him. And then also the media on this man, dude. He's just a goofball. Like he's just like he's he, honestly he's probably a stoner. Like the way he's just so calm and composed and like jokes around. He's like, yeah, like, he, he reminds you of, like a pothead, like a like a grown man pothead. Um, yeah. On top of that, I, I want to say what he did with two is elite because uh, I believe there's a lot of players, specifically quarterbacks, but players in general that make it to the NFL and they are good enough to be there and good enough to be a Hall of Famer and yada, yada, yada. But they have the worst psychological or a coach tears them down mentally and then they don't perform the way they should and they end up not playing anymore. And that looked like that was going to be with, with Tua. And then this man comes in and makes him watch away with like three hours of Tua highlights. Like something ridiculous, and he was like sitting there just sweating, staring at Tua the whole time. Tua was watching it, just like this, and he's just sitting next to him, like, "You're fucking amazing, you're so fucking good at football. Tell yourself." And Tua was like, "I'm good, I'm good." And then he he played the best football he's played. Like he, this, the flip from last year to this year was incredible. You know, obviously adding Tyreek helped him a lot too, but still, his deep ball was better, his accuracy, but he he played great. How he didn't get invited to the Pro Bowl is beyond me. Anyways. I do like Mike McDaniels. I think they'd be very stupid to get rid of him. And like you said, dude, they had a great year this year, but like this, he's still in a building process. Like they they sucked for so long, you know. Like it's not like he's just gonna get hot out of nowhere. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it, it is difficult. By the way, that comment you made about why he wasn't a Pro Bowler, um, that's also one of the main reasons I think they need to eliminate Pro Bowl voting. Um, if you want to think about it, Lamar Jackson's backup, Tyler Huntley, made the fucking Pro Bowl, so. And he started two games, right? Two or three games. Yeah. And he's going to start a playoff game, but fan voting is just a complete fucking joke. Um, there was one year, I think it was the 2019 Ravens team. Um, tw- 12 Ravens players made the Pro Bowl just because Baltimore fans do nothing with their fucking lives other than set up their computers in Pro Bowl. So uh, the state of Maryland, go fuck yourself. Uh, DMV, go fuck yourself. I want beef with all of you. You're never going to do shit. Come find me in Florida with Boca Raton. Uh, anyway, I digress. We'll get to their game later. Yeah. Uh, I do have the Bills, though, in this game as well. I didn't give my pick, but I think they're going to kill them. Moving on. Yep. Also, real quick, real quick, I think the Bills are the team of God this year. I think the DeMar Hamlin thing is going to make them unfucking beatable. Mm-hmm. I just think that there's some magic going on with that. Like, he has touched, like, whatever spiritual world or, like, crystals that Alexa prays to and stuff. Like, he touched <laughs> those with his incident, and it made him- <laughs> It made him like motivate this team. Like the kick return to the house on the opening kickoff, right? Okay. They haven't had a kick return touchdown for three years and three months when that game happened. He's number three. Like they are playing for something bigger. Obviously, yes, they want to play because they want to win the Super Bowl, but like they want to win this for DeMar. 
that is what they want to do. And Zach, we talk about it time and time again. When you have a purpose and you have a reason for what you're doing, you're it's a it's fucking hard to beat you, man. It's hard. And he's probably going to be there at those games too. So I mean, like, they're going to destroy the Dolphins. Yeah. But anyways, moving on to our next game. Very interesting game. Probably, I think, in my opinion, the most interesting game out of all these games. Uh, actually, Chargers Jacks might be might beat it, but the Giants coming in at nine seven and one. 4.30 game on Fox in Minnesota against the Vikings, who are 13-4. and four. Minnesota comes in at a minus three. How I'm feeling about this game, first of all, Giants are like – they're kind of like the Dolphins. They have games where they look unbeatable, and they have games where they look like the worst team in the NFL. Danny Dimes is actually starting to play like an NFL quarterback, though. And, you know, they still got – they got Saquon, who's the guy. They're starting to put their pieces together. Their defense looks good. Dade Bowen had a pick last week against the Eagles. They're looking good. Vikings, dude, they look like the best team in the NFL sometimes. And then they look like, what the fuck am I watching sometimes? It makes no sense to me at all. And this is going to be weird, but I'm going to take the Giants in Minnesota plus three just because it's not a one o'clock game. Yeah. um, You say it's weird, but then again, uh, a majority of the public is actually leaning towards the Giants. And I think because that is, is because the Vikings are the biggest fucking frauds I've ever seen. Uh, they had the easiest strength of schedule this year. They went 12-3. and three. They got brutally exposed, exposed by uh, the Lions when the Lions weren't even on their hot streak. Um, the Giants should have beaten them earlier in the year, but Vikings had that late turnaround. Danny Dimes in that game, by the way, the last time he played the Vikings, threw for 334 yards. So he balled out against them. I think he's going to lay his dick on the table again um, and just – Fuck them. You know, I hate the gritty. I hate Justin Jefferson. I think Kirk Cousins is a glorified just bum. Like, uh, he's a he's a 1 p.m. fucking loser. Like, just I, I'm not a fan of anything Minnesota. I'm glad they have no playoff success. I don't know why I hate the state of Minnesota. It's just not a good state. I think their capital is St. Paul. That's a fucking loser capital name. Um, but, yeah. Minnesota is like the, the most irrelevant Midwest state, I believe. Yeah, yeah, facts. Um, I also just don't like a lot of people on their defense either. Um, I think they're old ass. Who the fuck's there? Yeah, Patrick Peterson's bum ass needs to, needs to retire. He's old as shit, always talking shit. Um, I'm a big Dalvin Cook fan, though. Shout out Dalvin Cook and Adam Thielen. You know, great guys. But, um, you know, ever since they parted ways with Stefan Diggs, um, never been a fan of him. Don't like him. No playoff success. And uh, I hope Brian Dabble, the obvious coach of the year, just whoops their ass and just shows them that like that first game was a fluke and that we deserve to fucking murder you. Like we, we're going to, we're going to prove to you that we're a playoff team and you're just some regular season, like show offs and you ain't shit. And I, if, if, if the giants win, they better literally gritty nonstop the entire time. Like, like nonstop, like just fucking do it, do it till you can't do it anymore. Like do it till you pop up an Achilles or some shit. Like, just gritty your ass off. That's all I want to see. I just want to see him do it in their face the entire time. That's all I ask. Yeah, I'm not even a big Vikings. I'm not a big Vikings fan. I do fuck with Kirk Cousins. I think he's not as bad as like as like people shit on him for. <clears throat> I just think he's a meme. Um, I'm I don't like Justin Jefferson. I love Jamar Chase. I don't like Justin Jefferson. I think he's overrated. I think he's very overrated. He only falls out against shitty cornerbacks. Anytime he plays a real quarterback, what Sauce and Jarier locked his ass down. J- Jair literally said, he goes, that first game was a fluke. He knew it, and then Jefferson, zero. He grew like, gonna... on Jefferson. Yeah, yeah. He was like, oh, strap, you're you're my bitch. Yeah. Um. By the way, do you see the video of Amon St. Brown doing that to, to fucking Jair? Yeah, but that's such bitch shit. Like, dude, Amon Ra, you were getting covered by Jair. You didn't even make the catch, and you're going to do the fucking – Strap, yeah, bro. Like, right. yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you like what? Yeah. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Give me a second. It was Give number four. Number four made the catch. Yeah, I know. Hold on. I'm gonna look up Amon Ra stats from that game because I swear to God, I'll tell you right not... now. Who's it against? It's against the Vikings, right? Packers. No, no, the Packers. Jair plays the Packers. Six for forty nine. Hmm. And your your copied man celebration, dude. And I guarantee you, none of those catches came against came against Jair. I guarantee you, not a single catch came against Jair. So he's a bitch. He's a certified bitch. Yeah. Anyways, <clears throat> not a big Justin Jefferson guy. I think he's overrated. Um, and I, I'm not even a Giants fan either. I just I like I like what they're doing. I think they have a lot of potential. 
I also love Dalvin Cook, and for some reason they don't fucking utilize him. It makes it, it, it triggers me so much. It tri- you're one of the best all-purpose running backs in the NFL, and he doesn't do shit. It's it's one hundred percent their head coach. He's a prior quarterback. His whole offensive scheme is garnered to the quarterback position, and that's why they're not going to win. Because you know I'm a, I'm a big believer in balance. Um, big 50 50 guy and you know if you want to rely on Kirk cousins that much he will kill you he he will be the reason you lose i will admit Kirk, that the atmosphere is gonna be lit dude the, the minnesota games get they get bumping yeah i'll give them that minnesota fans know how to bump their nfl teams because uh let's be honest what the fuck else is there to do in the state of minnesota yeah <laughs> yeah you're not wrong um also i want to go on a limb here and i say i think adam Thielen is just as utilizable i would say if that's a word as Justin Jefferson. Yeah, I wouldn't go that far. He's not as I'd, good as I'd a agree. deep threat, but he's a better every down target. Yeah, I just feel like Jeff Jefferson has a better route tree and repertoire to get himself open. I just don't think he's as good as advertised. Like, I don't see him as like, like we said, he cooks, cooks the sorry corners, but any number one corner on a solid team is going to like literally line up across from him and turn into prime Darrell Rebus. Yeah. I also want to take – so I'm going to take um, – I'm not, I'm not going to take the line. I, I'm going to say Giants, though, but I'm not going to take it just in case. But I am going to take the over 48. I think these teams are going to light the scoreboard up. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Um, on our last game for Sunday, the Baltimore Ravens without Lamar Jackson coming in at 10-7, and 7, going to Cincinnati Bengals 12-4. and 4. Burrow's been burning it up. This game Sunday, 8-15 on NBC, and the Bengals come in as a nine-point favorite. Zach Watts, talk to me. Yep, same kind of idea for the Bills game. You know, this is another interdivision uh, matchup uh, from the AFC North. Ravens don't have Lamar Jackson. Um, contract year for him hasn't been out for the last six weeks. Probably not going to get re-signed type of deal. Um, but, you know, I just think the Bengals are – They've, ha- they've been here before. They've had Super Bowl experience. They know what it's like. They know what it takes. So they're just kind of handle business as they should um, and keep things pushing. You know, utilize Joe Mixon, Samaji Ryan, Make sure Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, get in the action as well. Um, make it easy. Do what you have to. Don't make this close because if you do, I'm going to have some questions for your Super Bowl hopes. Hey, you know what's weird is these teams literally played each other last week. Well, yeah, they play each other twice. Yeah, but they just played each other last week, and they're playing again this week. It's a little weird. And the Bengals yeah. beat them twenty-seven to six, and it's it's the same game. It's in, in Cincinnati again. That's so weird. Uh, Bengals are five and zero in their last five. Justin Hurt, or excuse me, Ooh, that was weird. Joe Burrow's been killing it. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't got much to say. I'm gonna take Cincinnati. What's their spread? Minus nine. I'll take minus nine. Cincinnati. Yeah. I'm actually calling. I'm actually pretty confident about this one. I think they're gonna kill them. As well as um, I was about to say, what was about to say, what was about to say, they're gonna kill them. And Lamar is gone. I I believe we've seen him in the Ravens uniform for his last time. And I really, really hope Zach that your magic that you sometimes have on a very small but rare occasion comes true, and he goes to Vegas, and then Lamar comes to fucking Tampa. I would be, I would, I would be belligerent with fucking happiness. Yep, I'm just saying, just wait on it. Oh, and now I, I love how, like, after we've been saying it for months, suddenly Colin the Cowherd talks about it. One I know. Time I just saw talk. that today. I just saw and that And then every, everyone's like, oh, yeah, Brady going to Vegas. But I was like, dude, I've been on this train for, like, fucking months, and now y'all want to hop on my dick? Yeah, like, we nah. posted it, like, two months ago. Yeah, Colin Cowherd watches clocks on the stove. It's confirmed. He's been copying my fucking takes. Colin, I'm going to find you. I'm going to find you. But I digress. We are last Speaking game. of Tom Brady, though. Yep, Zach Watts transition us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, speaking of our last game, uh, Tom Brady, another playoff game for the man, the myth, the legend, the GOAT, um, the reason I watch NFL football. Yeah, Tom Brady. Cowboys, Bucks, uh, Bucks will be the home team. Um, I'm going to be honest. Rematch of a week one game, I believe. Yep, week one, uh, Monday, look, it, it's it, Monday at 8.15 as well on ESPN, ABC, and ESPN+. Plus. Yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of the battle of the opposites because – you're looking at Zach Prescott, who I think lead the league in interceptions this year. Um, and you have the Bucks, who are the bottom five in the league and in forcing interceptions, um, which is weird considering a Todd Bowles led team is usually defensively orientated, um, considering their offense fucking sucks. Um, but the offense has kind of woken up in weeks past, um, more specifically against the Atlanta 
game, but um, because we know Blaine Gar Gabbert ended the year. But ah, oh, man, I I gotta say I'm always gonna pick Tom Brady just because it's the playoffs. You know, I have no faith in the Cowboys. I love watching America's team, quote unquote, lose. Um, I just not a big Dallas fan. I love watching them lose, and I think Brady is gonna not only get the win, but win in a fashion that people are going to be like, ah, shit, here come the fucking Bucks. Like it's just, it, it's got one of those feelings to it. That's how, kind of how I'm seeing it. I uh, don't really give a shit about this game. And I'm like the fake, I mean, I'm wearing a Bucks shirt right now, but I'm like the fake <laughs> Bucks fan. I only, I only <laughs> like when the Bucks win the Super Bowl and then at Tampa just gets lit. Like that's the whole, it's just to say like, fuck you to all my other friends that aren't from Tampa. Like that's the only reason I really care about them. I don't really give a shit about them too much, especially without Bruce Arians there. Like it's just a shit show. And I think you're right. I think the Cowboys are better overall, and they, they should win this game, but they're the fucking Cowboys, and Tom Brady's going to Tom Brady the fuck out of it. I do think, though, line is Dallas minus 2.5. I'm going to obviously take Bucks plus 2.5. I do think, though, it's going to be a close-ass game because that's how Tom Brady wins these games. He's not blowing teams out. He's going to win it very close, and it's going to be like, oh, he's going to get it, and then he's going to somehow get a miraculous fucking game-winning drive. Yeah, I agree. Just it is what it is. It is what it is. It's written in the stars. Um, we know how that shit's gonna go. But I mean, I guess the fans have to learn again because Tom's gonna have to kiss his son just a little bit harder before the game. Just go in there, and win it all. Yeah, but, or maybe even like wear his son's underwear. You know, maybe something. Just get, get some weird shit going on, Tom. That's gonna guarantee <laughs> you the dub. Because I mean, for some reason, it works for you. So, yeah. But um, anyways, Zach, great round one games. I'm excited. I, I really don't watch too much NFL unless it's for fantasy or playoffs. So I'm very excited. There's a lot on the line. It's going to be a good time. Tampa's going to be popping on Monday too, which is going to be lit. It's going to be cool to see. Um, but before we go and before we let you guys go, I have a hypothetical situation. I was I waiting on this. Mr. Zach Watts. First of all, shout out to the podcast Squad Brunch. Going to reach out to them, see if we can do a collab with them. Seem like some cool guys. They got some funny content going on. And they have a, a 6, 12, 18, and 24 challenge. And it's beating off, drinking beers, eating donuts, and running miles. And you have to do all of them. You have to pick one for each number and do get them all completed within 24 hours. Zach, what are you doing for which numbers? All right. Number six is definitely – okay, Wait, you said 6, 12. 6, 12, 18, 24, beating off, drinking beers, eating donuts, and running miles in 24 hours. Okay, 24 is easily the beers. Um, you could span that out over a 24-hour span. Uh, 18 would be the donuts. Um, 6 would be the beating off. 8, what is it, 6 to 12? 12. 12. 12 would be the miles. Oh, fuck. Yeah, fuck it, 12 miles. So Gonna have to get it done. 6 beat offs. 12 miles, 18 donuts, and 24 beers within within um 24 hours. Yeah. Okay, so this was my original. My original one last night when I saw this was six miles, 12 jerk-offs, 18 beers, and nah, 24 my dick wouldn't last. donuts. No, but listen, but listen, but listen. That's what it was, right? Then I saw a comment on it when I was looking at it again, and it was like, dude, you guys are underestimating this. It's a mile an hour. You can walk and do a mile in less than an hour. So yeah. what I'm going to do is six beat-offs. I'm going to do six beat-offs. I'm going to do 12 beers, 18 donuts. Or no, 12 beers, 18 miles, 24 donuts. And I'm going to walk Eight. the entire time. 18. You're going to be walking for 18 hours? Dude, I can bust out two to three miles in an hour, Zach. Oh my god, dude, that's a fucking long time, dude. But what you understand is, like, have you ever ran and then try to drink beer? It's not like liquor; it sits, it hurts. No, so the way I the way I had it formulated, the way I had it formulated was, you get your mile done. After every mile, you beat off. <laughs> you eat a couple of dude, donuts. My dick you drink a not beer. gonna be able to be beaten off after, after I ran. Yeah, but you're trying to. But bro, it's only six times. Like you could do it within six. Okay, fine. You do one before you start. No, you do two before you start. You, you do two before you start. You run. You run your mile. You get the blood flow and the testosterone back. You get a third one in. You got like three more of those for three more miles. I think 
Now the sixth one's gonna suck. The sixth one no, is gonna fifth, really the suck. Fifth, the fourth, fifth, and sixth are gonna suck. One and two are easy. Three is gonna be working for it, but four, five, and six are gonna be brutal. Yeah. Now if you I were to shrivel up and die after the sixth one. Yeah, I think if I was gonna take the David Goggins route though, I think I'd do twenty-four miles, eighteen jerk offs, twelve, twelve donuts, six beers. <laughs> Oh, it's, uh, uh, but do it like all simultaneously like he's just got like a beard he's like got a beer in one hand and he's using the donut to jerk off while he's running the mile and he's just like he's like i'm david goggins that's awesome but yeah hey guys thank you for tuning in episode 66 nfl week one playoffs zach watts any last words um i hope your team if you're rooting for one uh wins unless you're a vikings fan so um whoever you Dante report. Maggio, uh go fuck yourself. Yeah, facts. Uh yeah, big Viking hater over on the side. Go New York. We we fucking New York fans. Danny Dimes. Danny Dimes. Now that guy's a fucking Italian. Honorary Italian.